Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on The Winter's Tale and we get to hear from Leontes today in Act 3, Scene 2. So Leontes has put his wife Hermione on trial and for the last couple days we've been listening to her defend herself saying that no, she didn't sleep with Polixenes, she didn't know what Camilla was doing, none of that. And when he finally threatens her with death, she's like, bring it because I have nothing really left to live for except I want to preserve my honor. So I'll say, you know, leave it up to the oracle whether or not I'm guilty of all these things. So then they opened up the document from the oracle at Delphi which said she's not guilty, Polixenes isn't guilty, the baby that was just born and taken off into the forest to fend for itself uh, is Leontes' child, Camillo is innocent, Leontes is a tyrant, and all this other stuff. And Leontes doesn't take that very well. He again starts flying off the handle and, and getting very accusatory and he doesn't believe what the oracle says even though he had promised to go with whatever verdict the oracle provided in this case. And while he's sort of tirading, a messenger comes in and tells him that his son Mamilius has died because Mamilius was so upset by everything that was going on. He has died, like this six or seven year old kid has died because of all of this stress, which then of course that makes Hermione pass out because remember also she just gave birth like a couple of days ago. She shouldn't have to be there on trial. She's probably in a lot of physical pain. She's still recovering, all this sort of thing. And she's standing in front of everybody trying to fend for herself. And then she gets news that her eldest child is now dead. Also knowing that her youngest child has been taken out into the forest and left for dead. So she passes out and uh, Leontes says, take, uh, first Polina is like, oh my gosh, look, this is, this is the, the tenderness of a, a female heart or something like that. And Leontes says, take her hence. Her heart is but or charge, she will recover. I have too much believed mine own suspicion. Beseech you tenderly, apply to her some remedies for life. And they take her away. Apollo, pardon my great profaneness against thine oracle. I'll reconcile me to Polixenes. New woo, my queen, recall the good Camillo, whom I proclaim a man of truth, of mercy, for being transported by my jealousies to bloody thoughts and to revenge. I chose Camillo for the minister to poison my friend Polixenes, which had been done but that the good mind of Camillo tardied my swift command, though I with death and with reward did threaten and encourage him not doing it and being done. He, most humane and filled with honor, to my kingly guest unclassed my practice, quit his fortunes here, which you knew were great, and to the hazard of all uncertainties himself commended no richer than his honor. How he glisters through my rust, and how his piety does my deeds make the blacker. So we have a change of, of a, a change of mind, a change of opinion, a change of thought here from Leontes, and all it took was his kid dying and his wife passing out. <laughs> So a couple interesting things to note about this. What, what he's saying here, first he says, you know, take her in there, she's just tired, she'll recover, you know, uh, give her what she needs to bring her back to life. And then, and then he decides to repent once Polina and Hermione and some lords have, and ladies have taken Hermione out to take care of her. Then he starts to repent that he didn't listen to what the oracle says. So he takes all of this as uh, like his punishment for not believing what the oracle told him about Hermione's in innocence and his own tyranny and all that sort of thing. And he's like, I'm gonna apologize to Polixenes. I'm going to re-woo my wife. I, you like, be nice to her again, all that sort of thing. And then he spends the rest of the monologue talking about how awesome Camillo is and how fortunate it was that, that Camillo didn't go through with poisoning Polixenes. He's decided that, Polixenes, or that Camillo is a man of, of honor and truth. And he's like, oh my God, like if, if Camillo hadn't you know, thought better of it, 
then Polixenes would be dead and that would be my fault. And he's like, how, how fortunate that Camillo did that. He's so great and look at him glittering through my rust and uh, you know, the fact that he is so good makes me look so much worse. Which, okay, yes, that Leontes is having this change of heart, but I find it interesting that first of all, he dismisses the female pain and just says, take her away and deal with her, deal with, deal with her, she'll be fine. And then of all of the people that he needs to apologize to, the one that he focuses on the most is Camillo. Just gonna put that out there. And let that sit for a minute. He, he dismisses his wife's pain. He dismisses the fact that she just passed out because she learned that her child died. Sends her off for other people to take care of her. And instead of focusing on how much he needs to apologize to her for taking her kid away who eventually died, for taking her other kid away who's now gonna go die in a forest, for parading her in front of the entire kingdom well, she's just given birth a couple of days ago and is tired and worn out and all these sorts of things. Instead of focusing on apologizing to her for all of that, he's just like, oh, I'll, I'll re-woo her. And oh my God, Camillo, Camillo is the best. I don't know, that just, that just strikes me. And I don't think I'm the only one that it strikes because shortly after this, Polina comes fiery back into the scene and she's got some words she's got some serious words for leontes and we will get to hear those words tomorrow so i'll see you then for that Mwah.